get joyful and see the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, before I start preaching, I want to tell you that I've been enjoying, enjoying myself here, um, preaching with you. Some places I go to preach, there ain't no life. <laughs> I need to preach um, the Word of God, and like I was talking to Sister Micah in the back earlier, is I build the faith in the room. Amen? Amen. And in some places, oh Lord, I've been in places, I have been in places where I preach the Word of God, and I pray for the people. No miracles. <laughs> Not much. And I'm going to talk about that tonight on our last healing service night. And there, there's, just a, there's just something about this house that there's, there's faith. Amen? There's faith. It is impossible to do anything without faith. Praise God. And before I get into my sermon, I just want to thank um, everyone that has just made me feel home and made me feel welcome. Um, from uh, Sister Antoinette and her family, God bless y'all. Thank you for just being a blessing to me and just anything I need to just grab it and always making sure I'm good. Um, Calvin, where you at, Calvin? Calvin, you're awesome. He always picks me. He always picks me up. Always takes care of me. Make sure if I need anything, I'll drive. He goes. I'll drive you home to Texas if you need me to. No, 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 we don't. <laughs> brother. I jump on the plane. Just get me to the airport. <laughs> you know, and Sister uh, Sister Micah, just love your spirit. Love everything. You're such a servant. And, you, and I appreciate everything you do for me, and you, and you help me. And my sister, Nyla, 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 yeah, but Nyla, thank you so much for just being a blessing at my book table. And she's a little saleswoman. She's, made, she's brokering deals there. <laughs> so if you want a good deal, you need to go talk to her. And I'm like, okay, I approve it. Go. <laughs> but it, it takes us doing our part to make this successful. All the ladies that cooked and brought something, and, the, and those that served, the people, thank you so much. I want to tell you that none of us, none of us are beyond serving. Amen? Amen. None of us are beyond serving. When we serve a man of God, we're serving God. Amen. When we serve the house of God, we're serving God's house. It, it, you know, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't get frustrated. You shouldn't get upset. You shouldn't get paranoid. Uh, you know, some things don't go perfect all the time. You just serve. You know, God has a plan each time we walk through this door to do something for someone. I want to talk to you a couple of things today uh, and, and just really to encourage you. I want to encourage you coming to church. Amen. I want to encourage you that this is a house that you're going to be blessed in. You know, there's, there's three things that happen when you come to church. There's three things that happen that are guaranteed from God for you when you're in this house. And only in this house do you get this guarantee from God. God says, when you come into the house of the Lord, now get this, what does the scripture say? If one could put a hundred, a thousand to flight, two could put 10,000 to flight. Come on. What that, what, what that means is this, my friends. How many people can you count in here? I would need my son to do the math. He's quick at math. If one could put a thousand, two could put 10,000, how much more power do we have when we have this entire place full of people of faith. That is a guarantee from God that if you are in the house of God, that there's more power than you need in your life. You may be down, you may be sad, you may not be feeling like you, you want to be here, but I guarantee you that's the day you need to come through the doors. The, de the devil don't want to be around somebody that is with the power of God. Oh, he... He wants, to, he wants to keep you separated and away from everybody. He wants, he wants you to have your phone and just don't vibrate and walk it away from it. We're trying to call you to come to church. We're trying to call and check up on you. He's trying to separate you like a wolf would do. Come on. Like a devourer would do. Take you from the pack and attack you emotionally and spiritually. But when you come to the house of God, God says in his word... I guarantee there's more power. I guarantee there's more authority. When the house of God is together, there's nothing impossible for God to do for you. My brother and my sister are here to pick my hands up, to pick my hands up, and to bless, and to be a blessing. I forgot to say thank you to my brother and sister last night, taking me to Waffle House. 
Thank you so much. I enjoyed the conversation as well. They really know how to honor the man of God, and we just ate. I got an extra egg, and it didn't say anything. <laughs> I said, add another one on there. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, the house of God will give you more power. It'll give you more power. The second thing God guarantees is you're going to be healed. You're going to be healed. If there be anyone sick among you, bring them into the house of God. Before the elders of the church. Where are the elders? They're in the church. Bring them before the elders of the church that you can be prayed for and they shall. Not they might be. Not they could be. But they shall be healed. When you're in church where you're supposed to be, you will be healed. It's a guarantee that God signed with his own blood. Jesus Christ. He signed it. That was God's signature to his promises in our life was the blood of Jesus Christ. That was his signature on our life that we need to be in the house of God. That we need to be here receiving the word because only here. Amen. You can watch it on television. You can watch it on the Internet. You can watch other people on the Internet. But there's something about being in the midst. That's the third guarantee. The third guarantee, the third guarantee is this. He says in the word, if any, if two or three among them are gathered together, there am I. There am I. There am I. There's a guarantee that God will be here if two or three gather. Come on. We have more than three? Do we have more than three people here? God guarantees his signature. The blood of Jesus guarantees that if we come together in one accord and worship him, he's here. He's here. He's here. Turn to Psalms. Of some, first, this will be easy for you. Psalms 1. <laughs> Psalms 1. And I really feel led to, to preach on this. I know I could preach on healings and stuff, but this is what God put. We'll finish up the healings tonight. Amen. Amen. I like Sunday morning just kind of like, okay, let's just get down. <laughs> get it going. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, I tell you, I'm going to read this to you. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I'm going to tell you two lies the devil tells you about not going to church and not being part of a church. Two lies. Two lies. I like to call, this is part of my, I call it the Exposing Lies series. First lie is, it's kind of half-truth. You know, most lies are half-truth, right? It's true, you don't, have to go to, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. But if you want to be a Christian of authority, a Christian of power, a Christian that's going to grow, you've got to be in church. Oh, you know, he knows that he, can, he, he, may have lost your, he may have lost your soul and you're going to heaven. But he knows he can keep you tormenting. And that's all he wants to do is torment you. Because, see, he's going to be tormented all the days of his life. And he's trying to torment as many Christians as he can while he's running rampant around this earth. So the first lie is that you don't have to be safe. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to go to church to be safe. That's a, that's, a, that's a dangerous lie. The second thing is you don't have to have a home church to be blessed. Now, God's going to bless you to an extent. God will bless you to an extent. But the truth is, if you're not part of a, a home church, you're not going to have roots. Amen. Roots are important. Roots are important. Read the scripture right here. 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. That's, that's a person that is saved. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Where are you going to learn from the law but the word of God being preached over this pulpit? And then look at this. And in the law doeth he meditate day and night. It's always before him. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Think of a tree. Think of a tree with waters going over those roots, under its roots, through its roots, and nourishing. That is what the church does. I guarantee you this, that is what you do for others. When you come through those doors, you're a waterer. We water each other with our love. We, we water each other with the blessings. We water each other with ideas. And, and, and you know what? When you're not here, you're missed. You're missed. No one can replace you. No one can replace you. You were sent here with the spirit that God has for this house of God. And nobody can replace you. There's things when you're sitting there. Remember the other night I taught on your spirit making moanings and groanings. But there's, your spirit is ministering to other spirits in here by faith. You're needed in here. Someone needs you in here. When you miss church, you're, someone else is missing their need from you. Come on. As a head of the household, I make sure my kids are in church. I make sure I'm in church. When I'm on the road, I have to call and get on them all to get ready to get to church. Because it, as head of the household, I take full responsibility for the anointing in the home. And they only move as much as I move. There's a church in that, that's on Rev Media TV that's part of my ministry um, that, we, that helps that broadcast. They, their church grew. Now get this. Their church grew when the pastor finally decided, I'm not going after the women in faith. I'm going after the men in faith. Oh, amen. Every man that walked through the door, he spent just a few weeks getting to know them personally, and he gave them a job. He made them excited. He made them welcomed that they were here because he knew the key to the family was the man. And the, the wife and the kids will follow the man to church. If he woke up and walked to, went to church, they'll have to wake up and go to church. But if he laid in bed, ain't hey, nobody going to be going to church that day. Come on. That church grew from when I seen it with my own eyes, 23 people. It grew in less than three years to 200 people. Right now, they're buying land. They already bought the land. Cash. In Texas, they bought the land, and they're, they're going to build the building. In four years, they went from 23 to 200 and have bought land and are about to build a church. You don't tell me that the household needs not, does not need to be filled up with men in the house. The man of the house needs to step up in faith. The man of the house needs to step up in faith. We need to recognize that. The church has been flooded with women of faith. Praise God. Women of prayer. Praise God. But we need to push the men to move forward. And I tell you this, when you're in church, you will be blessed. You will be strengthened. You will be, you, it'll grow in you. You don't have to think hard or try and do it hard. Things become easier. And, and I'll tell you what, I can testify, pastor can testify, our, all our pastors here can testify that when you're in church and you're following God's plans, things get easier. Because you're not going through life by yourself. You know, it's not going through life by yourself. It's walking in faith with each other. You have someone to call. When you fall, come on. There's someone to call. You're not a rogue agent of the Lord. You're not walking away and no one to call. You see, when you're in the house of God, there should be no judgment. Praise God. There should be no casting out. I, I, I tell everybody this. I'd rather be sent out. Then cast out. Praise God. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just the truth. I want to be going. I want to. I don't burn. I don't want to burn bridges. I want to make sure that I can come back to the house and, and that they love me and I love them and all is good. Amen. And all is good. Let me tell you a story. I know you like my story, so I'm going to tell you a story. My wife, well, oh, bless her heart. I know she's at church, so I can share this story. She's not watching the stream right now. 
She loves to plant. Oh, she loves to plant. She plants everything she can think of to plant, flowers, vegetables. She doesn't have a green thumb. She has a black thumb. They die. <laughs> it's like the, it's a, everything. Every she calls, can you pick me up this and pick me up that from, from Lowe's? I'm like, oh, okay. I look at the little plant, and I'm just dragging it to the counter, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. You've had a prosperous, blossoming life, but I've got to take you home. And I took, I took it home in our first house that we lived at. And I took, I took it home, and there's like a sea of dead plants there. <laughs> but one day, we moved to another house, and we, she planted like a, a chili pepper plant. And it's like a Spanish chili pepper. And she, she planted it, and it was one by the fence and one by the, the swimming pool that we had, and just on the other side of the swimming pool. And then we noticed the one in the swimming pool just started growing. It was the only thing she ever planted that lived. I was so encouraging to her. Oh, you do. You, you know, maybe chili plants is your thing. <laughs> maybe that's what you need to do. And because that plant grew, it was bigger than all the other chili plants on the other side of the fence. And, you know, because they kind of spread out when you plant those chili plants. The birds kind of move them all around. So it's like nothing was as good and as juicy as those plants, those chili plants that came off of that. We had some good pico de gallo. We had some good spices to throw in our food. It was good. I'm like, man, you really get a hang of this planting. Well, we sold that house, and we moved to another place. And, and in between, we had to stay at an apartment until the other place was ready. And I tell you this, she got the chili plant, and she took it with her. And she put it in a, in a, in a I guess, one of the things, and she just, you know, on the balcony, keeping it watered and keeping it watered. That chili plant started to wither. I'm like, no, no, it's happening again, Lord. It's happening again. <laughs> We found out during the inspection, when we sold it, you know, because you sell your house, you got to get inspections and stuff, and they did a pool inspection, that that swimming pool was leaking. And right where the chili plant was, there was a small leak, nothing to stop the cell, but there was a small leak, and that plant was getting all this water. And this plant was getting all its roots were over it, under it, and through it was getting so much water that it burst with big fruit. They are like a tree planted by the water. Roots being watered. This is where you're going to burst out with fruit. I'm going to tell you this. If your life, ooh, this is the Holy Ghost. If your life isn't bursting, you're not bursting in faith at church. you got to look at your life and say, how much more do I need to be at church? And just sitting here is not being at church. But open in your heart and allowing God to change things. We all, we all need things changed. Me, pastor, every one of us walking here, no one's 100%. Not till we get to heaven. Every one of us, God's working, touching, changing, moving things out, putting things in. You are that chili pepper plant. Come on. And God wants to water you. God wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you every time those doors are open. He wants to encourage you. It wasn't the sermon I was planning to preach to you, but it's the sermon that God had for you this morning. This is where you move the mountains. This is where you trust God to change things in your life. If you're not in here, to sow seeds, you're not going to be blessed out there. Let me tell you a story of a friend. You remember the scripture that says more room than you can have to take care of it? Okay. He, he went and he was preaching and preaching and he went to a wedding to visit a friend's wedding. And he always wanted a horse. Always wanted a horse. And, he, and he's seen all these pictures of this beautiful um, Arabian equestrian horse. He loved it and stuff and just, man, I can't afford that. And, he, and he, at the wedding, he just met some people that were there that owned it and he loved horses and they were just showing pictures. He went home. Three weeks later, he gets a phone call. The lady that owned that horse said, I need to visit with you. Can you come by my barn and stables out here? We have this huge ranch. And she had all these horses there. And she looked at him and she goes, I've been having a dream, a dream for the last 
three weeks, and I cannot stop. Every night I have this dream, and I see myself giving you this horse. He looked at her, and he goes, well, well darlings, I know that horse. That's, that's worth a lot of money. Are you sure you want to do this? I can't let you do that. That's expensive. And then the, the husband came up behind her while she was getting the horse ready, and he goes, he puts his hand on his back. He goes, that horse right there is worth $40,000. And I, and I have a person that just offered me the money to buy it. But she said, God told her to give it to you. And I want you to know it's her horse. She can do what she wants with it. You're not taking anything from me. You're not taking anything from her. If she wants to bless you, just take it. And so he, and he walked up to her, and he goes over there. And it didn't dawn on him that he, he needed to build a barn. and Because this is a beautiful horse. You just don't leave it outside. And he had property, but he, he didn't have, have time. So he asked if they can take care of it. And the horse was pregnant, so they're going to keep the, the mare when it was born, and, and he was going to get the horse. And that was the deal, and he's like, that's fine. And he looked, and he goes, well, can I ask you a favor? If I, can you hold the horse for about two weeks? And he goes, I need to build a barn. He goes, is that all, all the time you're going to need? He goes, yeah, it's just two weeks. He goes, okay, I'm going to go and build my barn. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you, the gift you're giving me. He started driving, and not as soon as he passed off their property, making the turn on the road, God said, I told you I will bless you more than you have room for. God blesses. God blesses. And the same individual was, was um, preaching, and he preached at a couple of churches. And, you know, when you go out and you're evangelist, you take offerings to, to help support what you're doing. And he needed $1,000 for his ministry and $1,000 for his home, you know, for the home bills. And he just didn't, he didn't get any of that, close to that, near that, where he was at preaching. So he's sitting in the hotel room before he went home, and he's like, Lord, it just doesn't sit well. I just don't appreciate not getting everything I need. And the Lord said, when has man been your blessing? When has man been your blessing? You when has man been your blessing? And he, he goes, he said, Gerald, if you focus on being a blessing, you will seldom ever have to pray for one. Come on. That was the Holy Ghost speaking to him audibly. If you focus on being a blessing, you will seldom have to seek one. Five minutes after God told him that, his phone rang. It was a businessman in the neighborhood. He goes, Brother Gerald, I've been at both services, and I hadn't been able to give my offering. He goes, because I had been called out to go do a call, a sales call and stuff. I apologize for that. And um, I've, I just want to tell you, can I have lunch with you and, and give you an offering? He goes, yeah. He goes, how much do you need? And he stood quiet. Well, I'm not going to tell you what I need. You just give me what you want to give. He goes, no, I want to know how much you need. And he goes, well, how about you pray about it and just write a check? Right? And then he goes, and I do the same thing. I, I try not to tell everyone what I need because there's a reason. He gets there, sits with them at a restaurant, gives them a check, has a dinner. He gets back to the hotel. hotel he opens the check. It was $4,000. <laughs> he could have shorted his blessing by saying, I need two. Well, you let the spirit tell him. And he got four. And, that, and when he got home, he needed an extra 2000 to invest into his ministry. And God knew it before he knew it. There is a place, and it all starts right here, how you sow. God says in Malachi that you bring your tithes and your offering to the house of the Lord. And then he will bless you. That is another guarantee from God. If you give... You will receive. We're on heaven's economy. I, I live on sowing and reaping, not buying and selling. Come on. My life isn't dictated by buying and selling. I appreciate you buying my CDs, but it's not dictated by that. It is dictated by sowing and reaping. I give, I receive. I have confidence in God that he will bless me. Confidence in God that he will, he will touch the things that I need. I want, to, I want to tell you this thing, and I want you to get one more thing into your spirit before I finish up here. One more thing, and that is this, my friends. Don't give up. Don't give up on life. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on this man of God and the church and the great people here that are the core people here. You may not be happy all the time with all the decisions. You may not even agree wherever the headed, where they're headed or what happens. 
But you start lining up your spirit and adjusting, I guarantee you're going to start agreeing and believing. The pastor needs support and love. And you know what? We all make decisions, all do things. And we just trust God that what we're doing is what God has us to do. Amen? Amen. Remember the story of Gideon and the people drinking the water? And how Gideon, and we won't turn to it because we're running uh, short on time here. But it was, I studied that one day. And I looked at it, and, and I was just amazed. You, you, Jesus, you know, God told, God told him this. You know, he had too many people to go into this battle. And we all look at it, oh, well, God wants to show he's God. Right? No, that wasn't the reason. He took all his men, and God said, I want you to, to let them drink. And the ones, first, the first thing he told them was this. Those that are fearful and stressed or fearful and scared, Tell them to go home. And he made that decree. He said, whoever's fearful, whoever's scared, you need to go home. A few thousand left. These are saints of God. But God said, I'm going into battle. Listen to me. I'm going into battle. Anyone fearful and anyone scared, I can't do anything with them. Come on. I can't do anything with them. Fear is the opposite of faith. It'll stop what I'm trying to do. So if they're afraid and they're scared, they're not mature enough, get them Get him out of here. Go make him go home. Then he said, now, he goes, he has a whole bunch more guys still. He goes, Lord, and the Lord said, it's still too big. Make him drink some water. When they drank the water, the ones that stuck their head in the water and lapped like a dog with their head in the water, he said, get rid of. But the ones that were composed, the ones that got the water and drank it and had strength and were in control, those are the ones he wanted. Why? You ever work really hard outside, and you're sweating, and you're tired, and you're thirsty, and you turn on that faucet, and you just don't even wait for a cold cup of water. You just stick your head underneath that faucet and just start drinking it. You're exhausted. But you still get up, and you still go cut the grass or whatever you were doing. God didn't want people that were exhausted. He didn't want people that were with barely enough strength. Just, they're getting through life, but they're gasping for water and just getting enough air in them. He said, send those guys home too. I'll tell you what God wants. God wants people that can get the water, look at the horizon, and say, okay, God, what do we do next? Amen. Composed and in faith and trusting God. That's what God wants. He, he wants people that are, are confident in the word, and you only get that way by being in a church. Amen. I only got this way by being in a church. I only became part of this success by saying, okay, I'm no Lone Ranger anymore. I, I, five years ago, eight years ago, I joined a church and said, okay, Lord, thick and high water, I am going to stick with it. This is the church that you sent me to. I don't know why, because it's an old church. Everybody's over 60, but I'll be a blessing. And those people were my first supporters in my ministry and helped launch me. And, and, and they're older and stuff, and they go, David, we just see you as an awesome young man of God. We want to be a blessing monthly to help you. Didn't know that was God was doing that. And at the same time, I served them. I, I helped. I did what I could. Um, pastor needed, I still see pastor all the time when I go back to visit that church, and I'm always, that my station's in there, my radio, my TV station's in there, my broadcast, everything broadcasting is coming from that church today. I don't pay a, one penny in rent, nor do I pay a penny in, in electricity or on Internet, and that's very costly. And, and they even got me fiber optics. And they said, because you served, come on. Because you served, when I turned in my resignation, I wasn't going to be associate pastor anymore. They said, because you serve, all up there, basically, all that you see is yours. When you get to the point where you can be a blessing, you bless us back. But it did, wouldn't have happened if I didn't stop going from other place to other place. And just say, I need, Lord, I want your plan. I want your will. My ministry changed. My life changed. I now have a publishing ministry, a broadcasting ministry, doing mission trips, and I'm here in front of you today, preaching healing services and traveling. By faith, God has paid for everything that we have to do. By faith. It comes by connecting with the church. Because the church, now get this, is connected to God. This is a connection you need in this place. This is where you step in and God is guaranteeing he's here. God is guaranteeing there's healing. God is guaranteeing you have more power. God is guaranteeing your finances.
Amen. Amen. Pastor. Hallelujah. 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 H